Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at a transformed rational function. So, in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is transformed rational function. The transformed rational function has a very unique format. It looks like the following. y equals to a over b multiplied by x minus h plus k where x is not allowed to be h, y is not allowed to be equal to k, and a is not allowed to be 0. Before we go further, I'd like to explain the restrictions on the transform rational function. Let's start with the fact that x cannot equal to h. If you think about it carefully, if x were allowed to be the same value as h, it would produce a denominator of 0. And as we all know, in a fraction, you cannot have a denominator of 0. y is not allowed to be equal to k because if you were to shift the k over, y subtract k would produce a value of 0. And the only way that it can produce a value of 0 was if the numerator position in the fraction were equal to 0. And that leads us to our third restriction. The numerator is not allowed to be 0. If the a were allowed to be 0, it would not produce a rational function. In fact, it would probably produce a linear function, y equal to k. With all that being said, let's look at what's really important. First, the h and k tells us a very important piece of information. It tells us the asymptotes. More specifically, x is equal to h, and that will give us the vertical asymptote, and y is equal to k, and that will give us a horizontal asymptote. Remember that the asymptotes represent invisible lines which act as a barrier where the graph is not allowed to touch or to cross over. Although the next item will not be visible when you graph a rational function, nevertheless it's important to know that h and k together gives us the coordinate of the symmetric center of the hyperbola. Next, the zero of the rational function is solved just like any other function by setting y equal to zero and solving for x. It's interesting to note that the zero will only exist if the value of k is not zero. If k was in fact zero, there would be no x-intercept. In a similar fashion, the initial value is calculated as with any other function by setting x to 0 and solving for y. Over here, it's also interesting to note that the initial value will only exist if the value of h is not 0. If h were to be 0, there would be no y-intercept. And finally, the variation of a rational function is extremely interesting. It depends on the combination of a multiplied by b. First, let's look at what happens when the a-b combination is positive. Strangely, if the a-b combination is positive, the entire function will be decreasing, meaning both curves of the hyperbola will be decreasing. If the a-b combination was negative, then strangely, the entire function will be increasing, which means that both curves of the hyperbola will be increasing. Let's take a look at how to draw this very unique looking function. Let's get the following example down. Suppose I'm asking you to draw the rational function y equals 3 over 2 multiplied by x minus 4 plus 2. Before we begin, Let's clearly write down the variables so that we have them in front of us. a is equal to 3, b is equal to 2, h is equal to 4, and k is equal to 2. First, always begin by identifying your asymptotes. Our vertical asymptote is always represented by the rule x equals to h, 
And in this example, our h value is 4. Our horizontal asymptote is always represented by the rule y equals to k. And in this example, our k value is 2. Next, although it's invisible to us when we draw it, I usually like to identify the symmetric center, which is simply the coordinate created by h and k. Next, let's have an idea of what our graph will look like based on the variation. Because the product of a and b produce a positive result, this leads us to conclude that the function will be decreasing over the domain, therefore it will have this following shape. Next, let's calculate our initial value. So as with any other function, we can obtain the initial value by setting the x to 0 and solving for y. So we get 3 over 2 multiplied by 0 minus 4 plus 2. And that will give us a y value of 13 over 8. Not exactly the nicest point, but it will have to do. And finally, let's determine our 0, if there are any. So, as with any other function, we set y equal to 0, and we have to isolate the x. So, relying on our normal algebra, we get negative 2 is equal to 3 over 2 times x minus 4. Doing our distribution on the denominator, we get negative 2 is equal to 3 over 2x minus 8. Now cross multiplying, this will produce negative 4x plus 16 is equal to 3. Shifting the 16 over, we get negative 4x is equal to negative 13. And finally, dividing both sides by 4 will give us an x value of 13 over 4. Again, not the nicest x-intercept, but it'll have to do. Now we are finally ready to draw. In order to accommodate all our information, we're going to need a grid that's about this size. Go ahead, pause the video, and prepare the grid. With the grid ready to go, let's draw this graph. First, always get down the lines that represent your two asymptotes. The vertical asymptote, represented by the rule x equals 4, goes over here. And as a habit of mine, I usually tend to draw my asymptotes with dotted lines. So this is our vertical one, x equals 4. Now, our horizontal asymptote is represented by the rule y equals 2. So again, drawing with a dotted line, our rule y equals 2. If you look at it carefully, you'll observe that the two asymptotes form kind of like an imaginary Cartesian plane. Next, let's get down our x-intercept, which is located at x equals 13 over 4. It's not the prettiest point, but it is about 3 point something, so that places it right about, maybe about there. Next, let's put down our initial value. Again, not the prettiest point, 13 over 8, but I guess that places it right before it reaches y equals 2. Very close to the asymptote. Remember, the graph will approach the asymptote, but it will never touch it. Now, using your semi-artistic skills, do your best to approximate a curve that gets very close to the two asymptotes, but never touches them, while passing through those two points. And, using your semi-artistic skills one more time, try to mirror that curve on the opposing side of the imaginary Cartesian plane created by the asymptotes, like this. And that is a good enough graph. As you can imagine, it will not be the prettiest graph in the world. Again, try to show that the curve 
approaches the asymptotes but never touches them. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to graphing a transformed rational function.